this is Jay from a Sagebrush Journal. And today I'm gonna to go over uh, my uh, off-grid solar setup for our home in uh, Northern New Mexico. And so we're gonna do this as, uh, a, in a couple parts. First, I wanna show you my existing system, the uh, solar arrays, the solar panels, the batteries, the inverters, and then I'm, we're gonna just show you our upgrade for our system, uh, our makeover, where we're going to be adding uh, lithium batteries and a new inverter and a new charge controller. So to start out, I wanna show you some of my solar uh, panels of the collectors uh, that we're using out here for our home. And our home is um, in the desert in Northern New Mexico, and it's a 1800 square foot off-grid home. And, uh, on 20 acres. Um, and so uh, you can kind of see the uh, background out here, which is uh, kind of the high desert plateau. And so we got plenty of sunshine, uh, sunshine 300 some days a year. And so solar is kind of ideal for this location. So here we have, uh, I'm gonna go over some of my panels here. And so first I'm gonna start with the panels that are on a mast here. And these were the original uh, solar panels that were installed with the original system for the home. And so this was installed back in 19, uh, 2001 and when the house was built. And so we have basically six um, 120 watt panels. And so these have been here for now uh, almost 20 years. And so uh, they are aging a bit, and so uh, off of that array, uh, which would have been if we'd, uh, and so there are two panels, or in, there are 12 volt panels that are in series and groups of two, so there's three strings of two panels, uh, so that would be, you know, basically, uh, I, um, I think it's like 620 watts would be ideal if they were new. Uh, I kind of count on that right now for about 500 watts. This ground mounted array right here is we just installed last year. And so this consists of four 24 uh, volt panels and um, they are um, 260 uh, watts a piece and when they were new and so actually I kind of rate this at a thousand watts because we have basically four times 250 and so that array uh, supplies about a thousand watts so between that array and that array up there that's about 1500 watts under ideal conditions okay so let's move around to look at some of the, my roof mounted panels. So this is my utility shed. And this is where we have our water pump. We also have our batteries for our solar. And we also have the inverter and the charge controllers housed within this, this building. We'll go in there in just a minute and go over that system. Um, on this shed, we have uh, some panels that are mounted up here. And so, uh, first, we have uh, four panels that are uh, 150 watt, um, 12 volt panels, and so that's basically a uh, 600 watt, ideally, uh, system, uh, system up there. Um, those were installed in 2007, so uh, they are aging a little bit, and so and I kind of count on getting maybe 500 watts off of those under ideal conditions. Um, and it's not the perfect slope on that roof, so uh, so we don't get 100% efficiency out of them, but they are, uh, you know, they do give us uh, about 500 watts. And then additionally, we have a single uh, 24 uh, volt 300 watt panel here. And so between the uh, four panels and, the, and the, the large panel there is theoretically we can get 900 
uh, watts off of, of the roof. And so it's more like 800 to 750 to 800 watts that I actually get off of there. But so total, we can figure that I have uh, 1500 watts coming from the panels that are the ground mounted panels and the mass mounted panels and then add another 750 uh, here. And so we're looking at really about uh, 20, uh, 2.2 kilowatt hours, uh, 2.25 you know, kilowatt hours of uh, solar uh, collection. So let's move inside uh, to my, uh, inside to the utility shed and take a look at the uh, current system that I have there. Welcome to my utility shed, and this is where we house uh, the solar equipment and my tools and also my water pumping equipment that I'll show you uh, here in a minute. And so I want to show you first our existing system, and then I want to talk about how we're going to upgrade that system to make it uh, better and more efficient and uh, supply us with more power. So to start off with, uh, our current system is we're using flooded lead acid batteries. And so these batteries are what are commonly called L16 batteries. And they are six volt batteries at 320 amp hours a piece. So we have two strings of four batteries. And so that gives us a capacity of 24 volts at 740 amp hours. And since these are lead acid batteries, is that you can really only count on 50% of their capacity before they're uh, discharged or uh, low voltage. So in reality, what this uh, system was outputting when it was new was um, 24 volts at about 320 amp hours. So what has happened, uh, these batteries were purchased in uh, March of 2017, which is four years ago. Uh, it's, it is late March 2021 right now. And these batteries should have actually lasted quite a bit longer than they have. Uh, but unfortunately, I was called away from home for a, an extended period of time and didn't do proper uh, battery maintenance and the uh, charge controller was ac accidentally set to uh, equalize and so what happened is these batteries went dry and so that when uh, we add the water back to them and equalize them is they're they're back at far less capacity than they they were when they were new kind of think of a um, water reservoir that is silted up and so it has less capacity in that reservoir. It fills up quickly, but it also discharges quickly. And so that's why we want to upgrade these batteries with a uh, lithium ion battery system. And so what we're getting is uh, three Gill brand 200 amp hour 24 volt lithium ion batteries. And that will give me a total capacity of 600 amp hours. So right now our usage uh, typically in uh, our daily usage with the whole house is about um, six to seven uh, kilowatt hours and so that equates to almost uh, 300 amp hours, 350 amp hours, something like that. And so uh, hopefully with the new batteries that will give us plenty of capacity to, to go a couple days without sunshine. So in fact, like last week, we had a cloudy week and uh, we were running out of power every night. Uh, and so we'd have to run the generator first thing in the, in the morning to, to kind of charge these batteries up so that we had electricity. Let me go over the, some of the rest, uh, the rest of the system now. And so here, this is basically our junction box. It's called the DC disconnect overcurrent module. Um, and so this is where the uh, power comes in from the roof panels. And then down here is where the power comes in from the uh, ground mounted and pole mounted arrays. And then that power goes to 
this charge controller. This is an Outback FM60 charge controller. It has 60 amps of, uh, of capacity. And so that translates into about 1500 watts. And so I have 1500 watts of solar on the, on the ground in the pole mount and then another 750 on the roof. So currently, so as not to overload this charge controller, is that I have the roof mounted panels uh, actually turned off. And so at this moment, right now, we are charging at 53 amps. And so we're generating about 1,441 uh, watts from the ground mounted and pole mounted panels at this moment. So, and when we upgrade the system is we're going to add a second FM60 uh, charge controller and that will probably be mounted somewhere around here and then the roof mounted panels will go through this charge controller and so that will give me uh, the ability to use my full um, solar panel output which is approximately 2.25 uh, kilowatt hours. And so that will be a welcome upgrade as well. Additionally, here we have my inverter, which is a trace power station. It's a great old inverter, but this was manufactured in 2000. And so it's a kind of older technology. It's not a true sine wave inverter and the uh, the generator charging is a, a, a little bit um, less smart than, than s s some newer inverters. So we're going to upgrade that as well. And so what I have here is this is a Snyder Electric. And it's called a, uh, a 2524 model um, uh, pure sine wave inverter. It's still in the box, obviously. And it's obviously pretty heavy, so I, I didn't pull it out. And um, that will give me uh, 2,500, 3,000 watts of um, split phase, 120 volt uh, electricity. And it's a little bit smarter than this older, older inverter. And it is a pure sine wave inverter. Also, uh, is that off of this junction box, we have a DC circuit that goes to my water pump over here. So this is a DC water pump and it draws about 7.2 uh, amps. And this is what pumps the water from our two buried 3000 gallon cisterns. Uh, water is pumped from the cisterns uh, to our pr pressure tank and then through our filtration system. And that is our household water. And so we have a triple filtration system. Most of our water comes from our rooftop and we do rooftop collection. Uh, we also do have a community well that we can draw some water from. And so it's, that supplements the uh, roof catchment water that we have here out here in our off-grid home. And so that DC water pump is a little bit more efficient than if it were an AC water pump. And also if the inverter fails is that I could still have uh, a water pressure and uh, water pumping. So that, that's a huge advantage to that. So that's kind of the current system that we have here. And so we're looking forward to the upgraded system and I'm supposed to get the batteries in this week. And so then we will do an install of the uh, 600 amp hours of lithium ion batteries, which will actually sit in a nice little server rack uh, about the same size as the box of, uh, that the inverter is in now. And then we'll be getting rid of the old lead acid batteries. And then we will be adding a charge controller and the new inverter and that will be our new upgraded system. So stay tuned for that. Uh, if you're interested in that, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel right down here. Uh, if you like the video, please give me a like there. That would be uh, much appreciated. And if you'd like to receive a notification for the next episode, 
the little uh, bell icon down there allows you to get a notification when a new episode is posted. All right. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, this is Jay from Sagebrush Journal. Thank you.